Hey guys, so it was an amazing, amazing show. I want to share everything that I learned here today. I'm going to cut it down into sections. The first section is going to be with Steve Liz, and he's going to be giving you a lot of gardening questions. A lot of the people who came here had questions just like you and I probably had, and he's going to be answering those questions. So stay tuned. That's what's coming up right now. Um, I hope that he gives you the information that you're looking for. If not, leave some in the comments down below. Um, and I can get that information from you. I know Steve Liss. I can ask him myself and I can um, go ahead and deliver that answer for you. All right, guys. So stay tuned and let's get to it. Let's go see Steve. Gardening questions, okay? I want to bring you up to date on everything we've already done this year. Also, what's going on now? What you need to do with your garden? I have pictures of what I've been doing and everything that we've talked about this year I've done so I'm going to show you what it's supposed to look like if your garden doesn't look like mine you're not doing it right okay? <laughs> if it looks like mine and you're doing it a different way keep it up okay mine is neglect I don't do a whole bunch and that's what we're going to try to get across to everybody you don't need to do a lot to your garden to make it good especially the tomatoes Remember what I said? They're a weed. Don't water. A little bit of fertilizer here and there, and you'll have a ton of tomatoes. Okay? Right? Hey, it's Brad. Are you from Larchmont? <laughs> no, but my kid is. What are you eating? Uh, whatever you the happening. Oh, oh good. good. I didn't get any of that. <laughs> Sandy made cactus salad. And we could. Why don't we just call it? Let's call it succulent salad. That way we're on our theme. We don't deviate too much. Is there a difference between cactus and succulents? Yes. Stickers. Stickers. <laughs> How many people were at the hay bale one? All right. It works. I did it. It works beautifully. You could see the pictures. I had to do it to show you that it does work. I don't know what kind of product I'm going to get at the end, but as far as the growth of the material, it looks pretty good. All right. The other thing is the tomato plants. If your tomato plants don't look as good as mine, you're doing something wrong, okay? This is exactly what we taught you two, three months ago. And the key again is no water. So I'm gonna pass these around, all right? May has been pretty good to us, okay? We haven't had a lot of sun, it's starting up. June, what do we have? We had May gray, what do we get in June? June, June. June bloom, okay. So that helps a little bit. In those months, what's happening is that tomato is producing root system, okay? And it's trying to go down as deep as it can go. And what it does when you stress a tomato, you get flowers. When you get flowers, you get tomatoes, correct? All right, if your tomatoes are falling off or if your flowers are falling off, what causes that? Too much water, exactly. Do not go to your nursery and buy some calcium or flower drop stuff. It's one reason and one reason only, it's too much water. Okay, that's it. Yes. Pomegranates are a very drought tolerant tree. You do not need a lot of water. Deep soaking them once a month, okay? I don't water them at all at my school, okay? I just let them go. They get a little water from the, from the grass or the vegetables, but yeah, you let them stress. But when you do water, put the hose on a trickle. Whenever you're watering a fruit tree, Take your hose and put it on a trickle and get a deep soak, okay? If you're just top watering, you're not gonna do very well. It won't do good. If, you're, if your fruit tree is in your lawn area, generally all those roots will stay on the surface and you're not gonna get as much production. So you really do not want your fig tree in your lawn. I'm gonna pick on you, I hope you don't mind. You had a great question. The more I hear this, it will be, it will be, but you know what? You're gonna be fine. And what she brought up to me is she planted a fig tree in a lawn area and she's using chemical fertilizers to fertilize her lawn. Yes, that pomegranate or that fig will get those chemical fertilizers. Yes, it will not be organic, okay? But it's okay, it'll still grow, you'll get figs, you're not gonna die, it's gonna be fine, okay? <laughs> now, on the other side of that, if you're using any weed and feed, any weed controls, be careful. That will kill the tree. It's not gonna affect the fruit, but it'll kill the tree. So you gotta be careful of that. Yes? How many sun pomegranate trees? Sun, it needs as much sun as you possibly can. 
sun. Her question was, how much sun do pomegranate trees? All your pomegranates right now are flowering and setting fruit. When do pomegranates fruit? When do you pick it? September, September October. It's a fall crop. So right now they're producing. All right, if you're getting a lot of fruit drop, if you're getting a lot of uh, 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 flower drop, it's because you're watering too much. Full sun, they're very drought resistant. I've seen some of the best pomegranates in the world with nothing, just out in the, out in the order. Yeah. Can they, grown in a container? can they be grown in a container, a big container? You can keep them small, but they're not gonna get very big. You're not gonna get any pomegranates, okay? Bye. Um, what about uh, orange tree versus grapefruit? I know it's my grapefruit tree. Seems like it's just producing almost all year long, and my orange is like twice a year. Right. Seems like um, his question was... And the oranges aren't a lot. They're yeah. not a lot. <laughs> Again, it's water. He's got a question about citrus. He says his grapefruit tree is producing, getting a lot of grapefruit. His orange, just twice a year, but that's what it's supposed to be, probably. Um, is it a Valencia orange? I, I, I don't know. There's two kinds of oranges. You got a Valencia orange and you got a navel. Yes, there's some it's offsprings of those. Navel. A navel orange. Okay, you're not going to get as many oranges on a navel as you would a Valencia. I have uh, a, a, an orange tree in our backyard that almost produces year round, but generally you're going to start, you'll get it maybe twice a year. Watering is probably your cause. Are they both in the same spot? Almost. They're, almost. They're, they're a decent space. They're How probably... often do they get water? Not a lot. Not a lot? That's good. Rain, rain, the rain has been, especially last year when it rained a lot, it was pretty much all. What I would ever. suggest, fertilize them twice a year. Fruit trees. This is just a general rule. Fruit trees. Fertilize in the spring and the fall, okay? All across the board. When you water your fruit trees, I already told you guys, deep soak them. Put the hose on a trickle, let it go overnight, okay? And believe me, you're not wasting water by doing that. When we talk about water conservation, the whole idea of water conservation is knowing your plants, okay? Knowing what that plant's needs are. You can go without water, believe me. You don't need a lot of water, but you don't want to go without plants, right? You still want your lawns, you still want your flowers. You can have that without using a lot of water. Yes? What kind of fertilizer for um, I think we try to tend when we went, tend on, on uh, concentrating on organics here, right? That's pretty much what everybody wants to hear, what they want. Everything at school that we eat is pure organics. We don't spray, we don't uh, use any synthetic fertilizers. I do that for one reason, is to show the kids the difference. Now our landscaping uh, uh, crops, we use a synthetic fertilizer. What we're trying to do is pump out flowers as fast as we can, show them nursery production. That being said, I'd recommend the G&B, tomato and vegetable, or the citrus and fruit fertilizer. Um, if you want pure organics, and I apologize for not bringing it, but if you're looking into the pure organic fertilizers, make sure that it's labeled properly. Make sure it says O-M-R-I on the cover. Now what happens is somebody, some companies, I won't tell you what, but they'll put organic fertilizer on there with no certification. If you look on the back, on the chart of the ingredients, you're going to see ammonium nitrate on there. That's not organic. They put a little bit of ammonium nitrate to make it work better. There's a lot of companies that do that. But your Kellogg's products, your G&B, um, Lily Miller, what else we got? Dr. Dirt, E.B. Stone, um, all these companies, if they have that certified organic on it, you can be sure. But if it just says great for organic gardens, you can almost be sure they're throwing in some nitrogen just to make it work better. What? OMRI. OMRI, Organic Material Research Institute. Yes? I love it. What what's my what's my thing on tomatoes? It's a weed. Who cares? Don't prune it. Let them go. Now somebody will disagree with me. Oh no, you got to take this growth off and this growth. I don't care. My bottom line is I want tomatoes. I don't care if that plant looks horrible as long as I have tomatoes. Don't prune them. Just make sure that they're if it's an indeterminate tomato and it needs a structure and it needs a cage. Yes, you're just trying to keep it going up. Okay. But as far as pruning and picking them, no. What I do like to do is when I first plant the tomato, I like to pick off the flowers at first. After that, I don't care. 
Okay, right now, all you want to do is get them structured. Keep them going in the fencing. And if you have those little tiny small tomato cages, you better put some stakes because they're going to get very heavy. Right. Does that answer finding, your question? I'm finding that. Okay. It's a weed. It doesn't need anything. <laughs> Fertilize once in a while and don't water. Yes. What do you do after my tomatoes are red? After I clean up the plant dry? Do I cut them apart where I already gave you the tomato? Or do I Her question was part of the plant dies after the tomato. It depends what kind of tomato. If it's a determinant tomato, or a bush tomato that doesn't have that that already has structure what happens is all those tomatoes will happen at once okay if it's a viney tomato or an indeterminate tomato clip that off and see what else grows yeah so if you see any dead stuff pick it off but neglect that's the that's the key anybody that would like to come and see what we're doing at school please i'm going to be there monday morning so if you want to come by you see all the pictures? All those pictures I'm showing you is exactly what happens, uh, or we have today. I took these this morning. So you can see, we talked about the um, hay bales, uh -huh, cool. and they're fun. I've got all around these pots, I've got four hay bales. I've got determinant tomatoes, which means no trellising, it's structured. And then in between, I put strawberries, okay? All organic, okay? I did try to season them in the beginning by for the first couple weeks we put an organic fertilizer on there and really soaked it in that seemed to work now everything I read you're supposed to use a synthetic fertilizer to season it I'm trying to stay away from that okay trying to get a pure organic product and this year you saw the tomatoes okay yeah. you could see they look this year I can't believe how good they look it's the best year I've ever had with our fertilizing program what we're doing yes <laughs> yeah, wait a second. Let me take care of this guy. You're, you're, uh, actually, this is kind of fun. It's fine. We'll get to you, I promise, okay? Just don't get me off track. If you start talking about politics or sports, we're going to... Okay, his question. He has beets. He wants to know when you can pick them. Only thing I can tell you is pull one out, okay? Because it's hard. You can dig around, you can see the top of it, and, and see where it's at. And then his other question, his beets are getting a little bit white. Are they they're ash white? That could be a couple reasons, okay? One, you could have a mildew on there, powdery mildew. We've had cool, damp mornings, okay? Which causes powdery mildew. Uh-oh. They're after you, Steve. They're after him. <laughs> Remember that, Rick? First thing we did, oh my god. Yeah, maybe they need mulch. <laughs> Anyhow, um, bring me a sample. That's the other thing. If you guys bring me samples of your problems, that helps too. Uh, maybe I can't analyze it. Maybe I might not know what it is. Maybe somebody else will. But if you bring me the samples, that'll help me. Just by guessing, most of the time I could figure it out, but... All right, that asks your question? Wait a minute, gotta get this lady back here. Her question is not to water the tomatoes too much, yes. She asked about mulch? Yeah, what does mulch do? What does mulch do for your plants? Keep it it in retains the moisture, right? Okay, that means you're not gonna have to water as much. So, where are we gonna get mulch? Yeah. Right there. Remember, it's free. If you guys wanna do a cheap, cheap, cheap garden, you don't wanna spend any money, buy a packet of tomato seeds, come up and get some mulch, you're done, okay? Don't put a lot of money into it. Don't go to the nursery and the nursery tells you, oh, you gotta buy this, this, and this. It's not true, yes. She has a tree that's root pot in the. What kind of tree? You don't know? A what? It's a green tree. Love this. That's okay. That's okay. It's a good color. I don't have any pots, but what you want to do is you want to take the pot and you want to try to. Is it a plastic pot? It's a ceramic pot. You might have to break the pot. You can lay it on its side <laughs> yeah. and 
force something if there's a drainage. You might, yeah, you might want to push up in the holes, slice around. Okay. A lot of times, if a pot, especially in the terracotta, do we know what terracotta is? That's that that orange right behind you. Sometimes the roots get so inside that. that I, yeah, here. Sometimes what happens with these pots is um, the roots get inside and you just literally have to break it. So after you break the pot, what do you get to do? Make a fairy garden. <laughs> it's all planned. It's all the way it's supposed to be, right? Yes? I had a problem um, with, I think it was spider mites all over my tomatoes last year. What time of year? Um, it was probably mid to late summer. Yeah. Okay, her question is she had uh, spider mites. Tomatoes, eggplants, and peppers get spider mites very easy. You know what I do? I've already eaten my tomatoes. I pull them out. Mine were covered with tomatoes. I, had I know, tomatoes. but it's so, so hard to control. Okay. There are some insecticides that work really good. Uh, spinosad, um, neem oils. You've got to be very careful with some of the oils when it gets hot. Mm -hmm. Okay. And also with succulents, never use the oils. They'll burn. Right, Good. Sandy? <laughs> Sandy? Pardon. Do you put oil all over your succulents for to kill the bugs? Um, sometimes. Yeah, you got to be careful, right? Yes, okay. it depends on the plant. Yeah, but yes, here's what you do. Okay. You have to spray the underside of the leaves. Okay. Because they're on the underside of right. the leaves. And you got to continually do it. Okay. For now, which kind of bugs would I... are you talking about? Well, wait a minute. It's okay. No, you're right. We're, we'll go back to yours in a minute because oh, okay. probably... You see, I'm on a tangent again. Okay, okay. So if I have... Like this, and those tomatoes also receive themselves in the same area and they're coming up really nice this year. Do I have to worry about them again this year? So I never had yeah. I never had before last, last mites year. Mites are gonna be there. They're okay. in the air, they're gonna come. Okay. Okay. They're gonna come when it gets really, really hot. The key to not having the mites is to make sure that you try to harvest all your tomatoes in July. Okay. Okay. If you're getting a control, you wanna do some insecticides and things, go for it. There are synthetic insecticides that work very good. We're trying to stay away from them. Mites are very difficult to take care of. In August, I just rip them all out. I'm okay. sorry, but yeah. it's just, they get so bad at my school mm -hmm. that there's not a lot I can do. There is a fungicide that they use mm -hmm. to kill the mites, but it's very expensive, and I don't think you can buy it on the market. Yes? What about white vinegar and You could do that, but here's what you have to do. Her question, what about using white vinegar? in a soapy water. Right. Yes, you can do that. You have to spray it every day and you have to get under the leaves. Okay. It's very difficult and it's only a contact insecticide. Okay. Uh, water, scented geranium cuttings? Scented geranium cuttings? Well, when you do cuttings, you want to keep them damp, but you also want a well-drained soil. I'm going to let Sandy talk about cuttings and propagation in a little bit. So whatever she says with succulents, do the same thing. I'm going to tell you right now, scented geraniums are very, very easy to make cuttings and grow. Right now is the time. Okay? So you're on the right track. But here's what I want you to do. Now that I gave you all that information, bring me some. <laughs> <laughs> I love scent, especially the lemon one. You should so, know it. Brad, you had a question? I was just going to, you know, it just kind of popped up as you were talking, but um, I was going to ask you about IPM. <laughs> IPM, Integrated yep. Pest is Management. That, you, is that on your agenda for the future? Because I think, that's a, that's I think a we could fit that problem. in. It, it is a very good. Problem. IPM means Integrated Pest Management. And yes. Oh. Yeah, you could put all your suggestions on the survey. Um, be nice to me. By the way, I, I got one bad survey last time. Uh, I'm not going to go into it. It hurt my feelings. <laughs> but then again, it'll make me a better person because, yeah, there are flaws. I'm not perfect. Anyhow, integrated pest management. It's a balance of using biological controls, synthetic, no controls, all those things. It's trying to get to a point where... Personally, at the, at the school, at the nursery, we only have a biological control. We're very, very fortunate. We have enough um, beneficial insects that we don't have problems. And the little problems we have, I don't care. My rule of thumb, if you have more than 50% insects on a plant, you need to do something. If you don't, you have to have tolerance. You have to tolerate some bugs. Mm -hmm. If you don't want any bugs on your plants at all, you better start spraying synthetic chemicals, okay? But a few bugs don't hurt. 
As soon as you hit a plant with a synthetic chemical, you will not have any biological control. You'll get rid of all the beneficial insects and you're in trouble. Thus the word integrated pest management and how to implement it. Yes. And I use neem oil. Neem oil. Just, uh, in my garden mm -hmm. regularly. I alternate them because, it, because the, the, the neem oil tends to be more of a contact uh, type of, uh, but, but it, is, it is, will last for a week or two. Right. And whereas the spin sack goes into the cuticle, the leaf, especially like It'll last a little yeah. longer. Um, both are organics, both are good. The only thing I don't like about the oils is as it gets hot, the oils will tend to burn. So you really want to do it in the afternoon. Spray at night. Yeah, right spray at night. Best time to spray is, is late in the afternoon, night. That way you've got all night long for that chemical or, or your organic chemical to dissipate. Also, you won't have as much chances of it burning in the heat. Okay, how are we doing? Got any more questions? Now's the time. Oh, sorry. Well, do you got the compost for, for top dress or mulch, or do you have the stuff to mix in the soil? The top dress, because they didn't have it. All that is is wood chips. And the smell, it's just different types of wood. And you don't want to mix that in your soil. No, it's just a top dress to hold in the moisture. The premium organic mix that they have that we're going to start getting soon, yes, you mix it up in the soil. The key to good soil are, are amendments in your compost. If you smell it and it smells like dirt, you get that fresh, you're fine. If it smells like rotten food or dead animal, you're in trouble. Don't use it. That's kind of your balance. Also, if it's too hot. Some people take their compost, they put their head in it, and it's extremely hot. You put it into your planters, it'll hurt the plants. Be careful of that, too. And it's, if it's hot, it's still composted quite a bit. Any more questions? Yes, sir. I have a question about, we have a fruit tree, an apple tree that died in the backyard. And it's not going to be And part of us wants to keep it, the trunk, and part of us wants to dig the trunk out and replace it with another apple tree. Okay, his question, he has a dead apple tree and it's only the trunk, get it out because it's only the sucker growth, it's underneath the graft. Once that tree, you gotta, uh, if you look around on a lot of these fruit trees, apples, stone fruits, they're grafted, okay? Once you lose that graft, you're gonna get the sucker growth and that's what's happening with yours. You'll never get a good apple. So dig it out and put that beautiful apple tree that I gave you in there, or did I give it to you yet? Not yet. Not yet, but I owe you one. Yeah? Do I ever say no? No. Okay. <laughs> How about quail? Oh, this is good. Yes. Vegan, sorry. For a drought tolerant area with mostly succulents, how often do you put down mulch? Her question is, um, in a drought tolerant area, how often do you put the mulch on? I would try to do twice a year. Um, it tends to dissipate. But just remember, when you're putting a top dress in a mulch like that, it's raw. Okay, it's raw wood. It's going to take a lot of nutrients out of the soil too. So you want to make sure that you supplement your gardens a little bit more with fertilizer. Okay? Am I right? So far so good? Are you getting my critic today? Wait till I start screwing up the succulent one. <laughs> no, you're my backup. Yes. So I Are you sure it's spider mites though? Could you see them? I can see them. They're not spider mites. Oh. Spider mites are very tiny and they're only on the underside of the leaf. It was probably a mealybug or cottony cushion scale. Um, the apples get that. So they're like a white thing and then they get a little white powder on them. But the best thing she did to control it was washing them off. It's gone. Yeah, but you're going to have to redo it. But that's that's something like, that's called mechanical pest control. No chemicals whatsoever. It's just hand driven. Some people could do it. You got one apple tree, you're fine. Yes. I have cactus, tamales. Uh huh. And they have that that white dish. So the past I used to wash it off with uh, laundry detergent and water. Uh -huh. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm not God. You probably, maybe, 
The insect got too bad because it will kill the plant. But most likely, you probably got too much water on it. <laughs> no, I don't have allergies. One more time. Yeah, I need three, huh? Three for good luck? Sometimes I do five. That's me. That's for inflation. <laughs> All right, I got time for one more question. Citrus trees, her new leaves are curling. And uh, yeah, there's either it's either thrips or it's aphids, okay? Aphids usually only attack new growth. Here we go again, it's tolerance. How bad is it? Is it a big tree? It's a dwarf. Just get a little bit of uh, um, liquid detergent, soapy water and a spritzer, one tablespoon to a quart of water and try to spritz it and get it down into the leaf. Repeat in four days, that'll take care of it. But again, if you have a, a bigger citrus and your leaves are curling, if it's only a little bit, don't worry about it, okay? Usually your ladybugs, your lace wings, things like that will come and take care of it. You know what, I was lying, I'll take another question. Yes. <laughs> Oh my god. <laughs> We're going organic, so I'm not going to get into chemicals. I'm very, very good and very educated with chemicals on how to do things pre emergence, post emergence, but we're going to try to stay out of that. Dig them up. Hand pick them is the only thing I can tell you that is safe and you're not going to have a problem with it. What was the question? What was the question? And how to weed your garden. And remember, we do the same thing at school. So I have a huge hoop of culture. You know, we planted on top of it, we put mint. I have 10 kinds of mint. Why did I do mint? Because I'm positive it'll grow. <laughs> that way I can show you guys, yes, it works. But no, the one of the reasons I did mint is because we need mint, we use a lot of mint, we do a lot of teas, and I really could care less if it takes over. That is the exception to the rule as far as mint goes. Um, if you're not gonna put it in a pot, put it in an area that you don't have to worry about. So again, our next workshop is going to be on soils. It'll be June 23rd. I have no idea what kind of stuff we're going to have, but I guarantee you it'll be fun, informative, lots of things. I'm going to let Diane in a second talk about mulch and all the free giveaways. Do we have amendment yet? We have premium amendment. I'm trying to see if I can get some down here. We have premium amendments. So if it's not available today, it is available. Bring your trucks up free mulch. Diane's going to talk a little bit more about that in a minute. I'm also starting um, July the 14th, the South LA Wetlands. I'll be doing a workshop there. So the second Saturday, I'm going to be in South LA, the fourth Saturday here for the next year. The workshops will be the same, but you know me enough that they'll probably be completely different, right? It depends how I feel. Remember, I never really have a format when I do these things. So that's one announcement. Another announcement is on the 31st of May at City Hall, they are going to have their first annual Keep Los Angeles Beautiful Beautification Summit. Okay, this is on beautification of Los Angeles, all the projects that are going on. I believe I'll be speaking at 1030. And I'm going to concentrate on what we're doing up here in Selmar with Lopez Canyon my school and our community and our all our community involvement so it might be kind of interesting if you wanted to go and watch me pretend to be a politician <laughs> maybe i'll run for office no 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 yeah. and they'll dig up all the dirt we don't want that do we? okay and that being said are we all sitting down ready to go yeah. okay i'm going to introduce diane she's going to talk a little bit about what the program here as far as the composting the mulch and then I'll start and let's have a good time. Diane. Now this is Lopez Canyon. We um, make the mulch here um, for the city of Los Angeles. Um, right now we do have the mulch available. I'm trying to see if I can get some premium down here. It's available, but it goes away so fast that we can't even keep up with it. Um, at this facility, we take um, all of the green waste throughout the city of Los Angeles and we process it here. Um, when it's processed, it's gone through a, a screening process um, and it's hand picked. We pick all the trash by hand out of the mulch and it's screened twice, ran through the machine, and it sits out and it bakes in the sun for about 
maybe about 30 days. It takes about 30 days. Um, once uh, it's made, then we make it available to the public for you to use. Um, it's organic. You guys don't have to worry about anything in it. Um, it sits in the sun. Once it reaches 150, it kills all the weeds, all the seeds, everything that's in it. So it's constantly baking all the time. Even when we bring it down here, it's still cooking. Um, we do have it available if you guys uh, want it. Um, are there any questions about anything? Over here. So you're saying whatever goes to the green bin comes here? Yes. Yes, including if, uh, if people throw trash like they do, we hand pick everything out. So it's not done by machine. We have people picking all day. So, Diana, yes. like vegetable trimming. And yes, yes, yeah. but all that, all that is part of uh, the compost. So you're gonna we use all that to make it. Compost. You know, I just wanted to say that since the last couple of workshops, you know, when you're doing your green can, you're picking trash up and you see a little piece of paper and you go, no, that won't hurt. And I go, not anymore. I don't want to have to pick that out. And yeah. It's great. It makes you more conscious. And that's what we want. Yeah. That's what we want because it makes it easier and, yeah. and things are better when we do what we're supposed to do. <laughs> yes. Diane, not everybody has a truck or a trailer or whatever. Uh, do you also have it in bags or can it be delivered? Uh, we do have a delivery program. The delivery program is not available yet because we're just now getting the premium out. Um, they have hopes that it will be coming back in September, um, but I don't know exactly when it's going to come back yet. But we do have deliveries. Now, if you have a farm or, or big areas that need to be done, we do deliver. But it's much no, more no. than an average person could say. <laughs> Ray, you'll deliver, right? Oh, I'm not you're not not. <laughs> but you're welcome to come here and take truckloads of it. Oh, by the way, Diane will be helping me down in LA too, right? Yes. Uh, Promise? Yes. I can't do it without her. Yes. She's a big help. All right, let's give Diane a big hand. All right, guys, I really hope that you guys enjoyed this episode with Steve Liz and Cindy giving us all the succulent information and Steve answering all our questions for the gardening, for our garden and everything that's coming up now that spring and summer is almost here. Uh, I'm very, very happy to be here. Stay tuned because next month there's going to be another class just like this one with Steve Liz. They're going to have some amazing things. I'll post the descriptions down below. I'll also do an announcement a week before the class. That way maybe you guys can come and join us and I'll have an opportunity to meet all of you guys. It's, it would be just a great experience to meet you guys in person and that way we can talk. And just I just think that would be a great idea. I hope some of you guys can make it. Like I mentioned, I'll give an announcement a week before. I'll also put the description of what's coming up next month in the comments down below. If you thought this video was informative, please give me some thumbs up. If you enjoyed it, give me some thumbs up. If you have any questions, don't be afraid. Leave it in the comments. If I don't know the answer, I'll ask Steve Liz. I'll shoot him an email or a text and we'll see if he can answer your question. Okay? Other than that, if you're new to this channel, go ahead and subscribe because we have a lot of upcoming things and I want to share them all with you guys. You guys know that I have my container gardening and I do tons of things in my garden. I want to share all of that with you guys, okay? I hope you guys have a blessed day and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye. Happy gardening.